Ever gotten a question on a test that you didn't know the answer to? What did you do then? Ask the person sitting next to you? What did that person say? Did he give you the answer? Did you get caught? If you got caught, then this is the guide for you. The guide to the art of cheating. When you're trying to cheat, there are two main things you got to be aware of. Number one, what the teacher hears, and number two, what the teacher sees. The four main ways that a teacher could approach uh, an examination situation. Oh, and I gave all these methods epic names. Well, at least I think they're epic. First is drifting. Second is baiting. And then there's some teachers who just let you cheat. These are nice. Be good with these teachers. And then there's what I like to call a straight point guard. Yes, I know. It's weird. Anyway, drifting is pretty easy to counter. So, I'm sure everyone knows that when the teacher, like, she just goes and takes her round around the class. Remember that she just walks between the rows and then she walks up and down the entire class? That's basically what drifting is. As soon as she goes into a position where she's either behind you or she just can't see you, you're golden. You can get whatever answer you need then, but if you get hurt or you take too long, you're gone. She will turn back because every teacher knows that you will try to cheat. It's just that you gotta cheat fast enough. Anyway, moving on to the next technique is baiting. Baiting is a technique where if you use logic, you can stay safe. Ever seen the teacher walk out of the class and then she snaps back in and then she sees that a few kids are trying to cheat? That's a classic bait. And then there's a different type of baiting in which the teacher uses her environment. And I speak of this from personal experience that's happened to me, and the only reason I survived was blind luck. Let's say that your class has a pillar on the wall, and there are a few seats behind the pillar as well. So the teacher goes and stands behind the pillar in such a position that the kids behind that pillar can't see her and they think that she's in the class. So let's say that while she was going behind the pillar, the kids who were the kids who can't see her were doing the work, so they didn't so they didn't know that she went behind the pillar. So one of these kids looks up and he sees that, oh, I can't see any teacher here. He goes with that. And then he thinks, well, seeing as the teacher's not here, I should probably start cheating right now. And then he tries to cheat, and the teacher snaps right back out again, and boom, he's dead. Anyway, you can counter this technique if you just lose plain logic. No teacher is stupid enough to just leave the class. You should know that. If you can't see a teacher, that's a big sign to not cheat. To not cheat, remember that. Anyway, moving on, straight point guard. This is nigh on impossible to counter because she's staring right at everyone. She just stands right like right behind her chair and she stares at the entire class. This is really difficult to counter and the only way this can be countered is by situational occurrences which are really just too random to teach. I got out of one straight point guard because the teacher's phone rang and so she turned and that was when I teached bus just there's one thing that you should be aware of. You should just be on the lookout for anything that takes her eyes off of you. If that happens, you gotta snap, you gotta cheat, and you gotta snap back. You just hope that she does not see. Well, now you know what the teacher's going to do, but you may ask, what are we supposed to do? Well, I have the answer. A flash turn. What a flash turn is, is that basically, you're supposed to, when the teacher is not looking, you do your cheating, and you, you, you turn, when the teacher is looking, you cheat, and you turn back. That is what a flash turn is. And if the teacher isn't looking, you just need to be careful about your turning. Why? Because if you move too fast, she might just get it out of the corner of her eye. She might just see that movement out of the corner of her eye, turn, and say you're cheating. Too slow, and she might just turn back and see you. You've got to find the right speed at which she doesn't notice, and you can cheat fast enough that she does not like turn around and see you. And quite obviously, you need to keep your voice down. Duh. Now that you've reached the person whom you're going to cheat with, in multiple situations you may be in, if you're too far away to actually say something to the person, then you can use your fingers to tell the person which question you want, like show them the number on your finger. But if you can't talk directly to them, then the only thing that that person is useful for is answering the MCQs. Why? Because there's a simple way that you can use anyone who's sitting even far, far, far away to help you give, to give you answers for MCQs. There, there's a simple way I've developed which you can use for MCQs. If you just look at a person and you give them a question number, for example, you say question number two. If the answer to that question is A, they tap on the forehead. If it's B, they tap on the nose. If it's C, they tap on their mouth. And if it's D, they tap on their chin. 
Now there are a lot of other things you can do, but those are quite situational, and teaching them wouldn't really be useful. But at the end of the day, guys, there's one simple thing to remember. The teacher knows you're cheating, and the teacher just doesn't care. It's your job to, te to cheat well enough that she just doesn't know for sure, because the teacher doesn't care if you're cheating. She just wants to cover her own ass because she's supposed to stop you from cheating. But she wants you to cheat in such a way that she does not see you, so that she does not have to care. And I hope this guide will help you achieve that. Thanks for watching.